Hello and welcome to another episode of Banded Fishing UK. In this episode, I'm fishing the River Lucker, or the Lucker Estuary, just upstream from the Lucker Boating Club. Today, my target is flounder. There are other species that I might pick up today, including bass, green eels, mullet, and there's a very low chance of getting a sea trout. But they are there, but the target is flounder. Now, conditions are not as forecast. It's supposed to be calm and dry today. But I had to tuck out of the way because the winds are 30, 40 mile an hour around the corner where, where I wanted to go. And there's a constant drizzle as well. That's why I got this, this setup as well, the tent setup, which is rare for me. But uh, yeah, there's a small tide, which is my favorite for this, this sort of area. There's less pull. I have to move back less, which is great. Nice, comfortable fishing for the change. And there are reports of a few flounder, so let's see if I can get a couple. Okay, I'm just putting some baits on ready. The tide won't be long, and it'll be pushing up. Hopefully I'll get about two hours either side of high water to fish. Baits today. I've got some old black lug, old black lug from the freezer. So on each snood I'll put half a worm, roughly, I'll just thread half a worm on. In and out, just sort of knit it on. Just for a little bit of extra scent. Snap that off, keep it there for the next bit. I'll just thread that up over the hook. There. Loads of scent. It's all falling apart in my hands. But the classic bait for flounder are maddies. Little ragworm. Reds, harbour rag, mudworm. These are from my local ragworm farm. And all I do, and they're prime worm, lovely worm. So on my size 2 manta, I'm just going to head hook a few, about 10 worms per hook, just put them on quickly. Yeah, don't try to thread maddies on, especially if you've got cold hands or wet hands. Can be hard work, don't be too fussy. Again, I'm not going to be casting far, so these little tails, they won't come off. And that just gives you so much movement. Yeah, I've got a few more on my hands. Just nick those on. Okay, so that's a nice, a nice bunch of worm there. I'll just slide that little bit of lug down. That's a comp, really compact bait. Hook points there, and that's that's really attractive to a flounder. Now that first stop, I'm going to slide down. If you end up with a bait, sort of, you see people thread them up the line this this long. As always, there's a chance of fish biting the line. You want the fish to take the hook. I know that sounds obvious, but still, some people thread the you know, baits this long, don't you? Keep your bait short and compact. And if you reel in, and there's still some worm on your hook, see half that's still on it, thread it up the line and just top it up. Now, worm is expensive, or can be expensive, so you just make the most of it. There's no point throwing it away, just for the sake of it. Just keep topping it up. So I'll put my, my beads down a touch, keeping that gap, and that's ready to go. I'm going to get it. four traces set up today. I'll be fishing with two, and I'll have two spares. Because when the flounder comes through, it can happen pretty fast, and you want to keep your baits in the water. You don't want to waste any time with your rod out, not fishing. Let's get the rest of them sorted out. Okay, so my first two casts are out. So the first cast on each rod, in the in this sort of half hour, the estuary is really filled in. Prime time now for flounders. You see that little channel I had on my right is now probably three or four foot deep. And you got that other channel out there, the small one, and that is the main river. I'm dropping one one rod in here, about five yards out from the bottom of the stones. I've got one over there into that side channel, about 10 to 15 yards out from the stones. So both in the bottom of the channels. Now all flatfish, but especially flounder will follow the troughs so you might have a channel in an estuary on a beach you might have a small stream coming in or just little divots they'll follow anything but it's important to look for features when you're fishing for flounder i've got bites on both rods you just see that sort of tappy bite on the left hand rod then the right hand rod is the first one to go out and that's been having bites since well minutes within casting but when you fish for flounders, there's no rush to strike. 
they're not going to shy away from the bait once they find it they're going to eat it and remember we're using three hook rigs and the whole the whole point of using a three hook rig is to catch three fish and when you've got one flounder playing with a hook he's going to shake the other two hooks around as well and drag the bait to where the other fish are going to be living so there's no panic after you get that first bite just give it five maybe ten minutes and with a bit of luck we'll get more than one fish I'm going to bring that right hand rod in now I think it's been on for a while and like a slack on this left I'm going to tighten that up a little bit because I just want to stay in contact with it I don't want to get it stuck in the rocks so let's see what's on that right hand rod So there we have it, flounder number one. It's a bit small for the for the lucker stamp. They are usually a good size here. It's an inside fish, but it's going to be going back anyway. That one. If I if I do get a few bigger ones, I will keep a few, three or four. But I want them a lot bigger and a lot fatter. There we go, nicely hooked. Beautiful looking fish, nice and clean. Lovely markings on it. <laughs> Plenty of life in it as well. I'll just pop it back now. There's the first fish of the day. Gone. Like a rocket. Well, my first cast on each rod produced a fish. You saw the first one. That fish that would have been just in size, which I released anyway. The second fish on the, the left hand rod was about six inches long. I haven't bothered recording that one. I think they were on it as soon as the bait hit the bottom. I was getting sort of rattles early on and it's just like a vibration, that sort of bite, you know, really fast rattle with the smaller fish. I just hope I'm not plagued by them. And with a bit of luck, the bigger fish will move in as the tide gets closer to high, high water. And so like I said, I'm using a size 2 hook and both of those fish were easy to unhook. The eye of the hook was sticking out of their mouth so you could turn it easily. I know a lot of people use smaller hooks for flounder and there's no need. An incised fish, well a size 2 is nothing to an incised fish. You can even go as high as a 1-0. But I find the 2s are a nice sort of, a good compromise then. The best of both. There's a bite again, my right hand rod. That would be a better fish. Like I said, there's no rush. When you get a bite of the flounder, there's no point running into your rods. They're not going to pull it in. They're not going to shy off a bait. So just leave them have a chew, and hopefully they will attract a few of their mates, and you'll get two or three on a go. That'd be nice. So I'm going to leave these bites develop for ten minutes. I'm going to have a cup of coffee and see if I can get a bigger fish. That's a bit more like it, isn't it? Still a small stamp of fish for you. That's uh, yeah, that's probably below average. They're still healthy fish, fat, fat flounders. Same bait, same rigs. I just left that bite develop about 10 minutes after I had the first bite. But then they sort of stayed still. You would if you'd missed the first bite, perhaps you wouldn't have even seen it. You know, you wouldn't have known the fish were on. So. Uh, yeah, things are looking up anyway. Great stuff. My setup today is quite a lot different to what I usually use. I've uh, I've left the heavy stuff in the, in the house, the big beach casters and big multiplier reels. I've got a pair of flatty fanatic rods, which are similar to a bass rod. 
They're an old corner flex rod. They're similar to a bass rod. The one is uh, 11 foot, one is 12 foot, and they're both rated to cast two to four ounces. They, they're perfect for this light desk free work. But if you haven't got a bass rod or this, these flatty rods, a carp rod will do. Up tiders, if you can get a 10 foot up tider, or mackerel pier rod. There's so many different types of rods you can use here. So anyone can get out and catch flounder. The reels are fixed spool, just to make it easy for me. I'm only just lobbing it. I'll probably be casting 20 yards maximum. Uh, main lines, 15 to 18 pound. At a guess, that's what I think I've got. I don't need anything more. I've got a shock leader on one rod, but there's no need for it because it, there won't be any power casting at all. Uh, if you're going to fish, don't bring heavy gear. They're only going to be small fish. A, a big flounder here is two pound. So make the most of it, use light gear, and you'll get a good fight off the flounder. Uh, rigs, rig wise, I'm going to be using five foot wear six rigs. Now a wear six rig is like a three hook flapper, but your bottom, your bottom snood is on a running ledger. Just gives you a bit of bite indication on the bottom snood. One of my favorite scratching rigs. I'm using a, a three ounce pyramid lead. That, Grips okay in the sand and in the, in the silt, but I still want it to have a bit of movement, so there's no grip wires because I like I like to trundle the lead and leave it settle into a hole. That's where the flounder is going to go. It'll just roll along, find a channel, and sit there. And those fish work up the channels. My snoods, so I got an 80 pound rig body on there, sorry, just for stiffness and it stops the tangles and that. Snood wise, I've got 40 pound snoods. Which may sound a bit heavy for small fish, but again, that little bit of stiffness just keeps everything... Well, it stops it from tangling. Simple as that, stop it from tangling. Now, some people like bling for flounders, some don't. The way I think is, it doesn't do any harm, so I use it anyway. And over the years, I've tried all different types of beads, different colours, and I settled on white beads. So I use six white beads, Right, let's start with the hook. I got a size 2 manta, a sequin, and a, a float stop or line stop. And then I've got a little gap and then another line stop. And I've got my six beads, which make a lot of noise, a lot of rattling, and another float stop. The reason I got that gap there is because when you get a flounder, sometimes they, they really swallow it down deep. And if those beads are straight down to the hook, those, even the beads will be down in his guts and it's, it's so hard to, to get the hook back out of him. So that's a little tip there, just keep that little separation. Don't squeeze your float stops tight to the beads because you won't get the rattle. You've got to have a little, a little bit of play in there and that'll attract the fish. I've also, at the top of my Wessex rig, put a ball weight. That's about, I think it's about three quarters of an ounce. The reason for that is I'm up on quite a high bank here and obviously with flounder being flatfish, they stick to the bottom. They'll come off a little bit, but they're not gonna come up three foot off the bottom and take a bait. Not as a rule anyway. So I use that, and that pins my whole trace down. Now, it's important that you, if you're gonna use this ball weight, that your bottom, your normal lead is much heavier. Otherwise, when you cast, they'll overlap each other. So that's, it's just a bit of weight just to pin the trace down. I also be fishing with slightly slack line again just to make sure that this top top of the snood and top of the trace is pinned onto the deck. Well I've been lucky in this session to have loads of bites but I've got a tip for when it is a bit quiet with flounder. If you sat there and you haven't had a bite for say 10 minutes or so just pick the rod up Go down to the water and just drag really slowly back about a metre and that little bit of disturbance and movement can make a fish switch on. Fish might be just behind the bait thinking about it or shall I take it? A little bit of movement and bang you'll get a reaction quickly. I'll just do that, I think I'll do it on both rods now anyway, it won't hurt. There's no weight on there anyways, there's no fish on there yet. As far as I know. Give it a bit of slack. Oh, there's a knock on there now. 
There's a bike straight away on there. Look at that. Might have just done the trick. Oh, that's a good reaction there, straight away. Here we go, I'll put that one down as well. For both the rods, it had been quiet this cast. We'll just give him a few minutes to take that bait down. Yeah, the tide is starting to pull left now, so it's ebbing away. Ebbing means the tide is going out. I should have about another two hours fishing if I, if I want to stay that long. Yeah, there's a bit of movement on our left hand rod now. Let's see, let's see if I can lip up a, a better fish. Seems to be weight on there. And a kick. Yet again, another small one. Just lip hooked, look, he's just taken that. Hooked by a tiny slither of skin. I'm going to put this rod out a bit further as well now. Because I keep picking up, I'm picking up the smaller fish in the same sort of areas. Okay, so that's out about 40 yards now. Again, no power casting, so I'm not worried about not having a shock leader. Let's see what happens with that now. Even though it's quite a chilled out way of fishing, I'm still busy all the time because I'm setting up these spare rigs, which saves a lot of fishing time. The maddies can be a bit of a pain to bait up with. Just wipe my hands and check that other rod. Oh, let's see if there's a fish on it. Oh, that feels better. That feels a lot better. Bit of weight on this. Lots. Is either a better fish or a couple of fish on this one? There's something happening. I thought that was going to be the mother of all flounder then. I hooked him just in his side there. She was coming in sideways. There's something wrong with this fish's eyes. I've never seen that before. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. It's got a cloudy white eye. The two of them are. But it's a better stamp of fish. That's more, more like the, the lucker size. It's a good thickness on him. Healthy fish. Apart from those eyes, like I said, I don't know what that is. 
but he's doing well. We're not going to eat that one. Not with eyes like that. <laughs> I'm going to put it back. Getting smaller and smaller all the time. That's number, I think it's number 13 now. It's been a busy session. I'm just after something a bit bigger now. I'm getting towards the end of my session now. I've just put the last of my maddies out. There's something stripping it. It's either crab or school bass. I think they might be schooly bass. Because they're usually with the crab, the hooks come back shining, but there are little bits of worm left. I can't keep up with it to be honest. So the last of my bait has gone out. I can't see me getting another fish. Don't want to put a downer on it. But it's been a good session, even though the fish have been small. I've had the 13 flounder, which is a great session in anyone's book. It's a shame we didn't get any big guns, but it does prove that the method works. So the rigs and the baits work. I got full confidence in these. I've used them for years. It's been brilliant for me. But uh, remember, flounder are good for beginners. People who just want to build confidence. Or perhaps if you're fed up using the big rods, going for the bass and the cod and the rays. It's just a bit of variety to spice it up a bit. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next episode.